Hi, everybody. I'm Kathy Griffin. I am really nervous right now. I've never done a press conference. I don't really know how they work. Feel free to jump in. Kathy, and when I get nervous, I, I like make jokes, so I'm probably gonna like stumble and stuff. She's gonna, back? she's gonna make some comments and then we'll do questions, okay? I, so I sort ahead. of had a speech prepared. So let her, let her my, talk. My first. notes are by the wayside. It's all off the cuff. Look, <laughs> um, I'm not afraid of Donald Trump. He's a bully. I've dealt with older white guys trying to keep me down my whole life, my whole career. I'm a woman in a very male dominated field. Uh, I love what I do. I love making people laugh more than anything in the world. And I have learned over the years that sometimes when you do stand up, and I've done it in a war zone, and I've done it at Walter Reed Hospital, and I've done it at Carnegie Hall, sometimes people want, you know, a joke that's out there and a little crazy. So regarding the image that I participated in, that apology absolutely stands. I feel horrible. I have performed in war zones. The idea that this, you know, uh, made people think of this tragedy, to have been touched by this tragedy, is, is horrifying and it's horrible. Uh, trust me, if I could redo the whole thing, I would have had a blow up doll and no ketchup. You know, I make mistakes. I'm an out there comedian, I'm an in your face comedian. But I just wanted to say, you know, if you don't stand up, you get run over. And what's happening to me has never happened ever in the history of this great country which is that a sitting president of the United States and his grown children and the first lady are personally, I feel, personally, trying to ruin my life forever, forever. I, you guys know him, he's never gonna stop. I know him. Let me, let me talk to like a camera like I'm talking to him. And I'm, I might make a couple jokes because I'm, I'm super nervous. Everyone's pointing to their camera. I'll just, <laughs> this one, this one. All right, I'll sort of look in this direction. All right, so I know him. All right, so the Donald, it's me, the Kathy. And if you guys don't know this, he, if you meet him, he wants you to call him the Donald, which I've always thought was the weird. And I remember saying to him the first time, okay, I'm the Kathy, and that went right over his nest. Okay, that was a joke about his hair. But I have seen eggs in it. Like, I think I've seen, allegedly, it's allegedly, I am teasing the president because this is America and you shouldn't have to die for it. The death threats that I'm getting are constant and they are detailed and they are serious and they are specific. And today it's me and tomorrow it could be you. So yeah, I'm an obnoxious comedian. I'm not the most famous person in the world. I'm just standing here with Lisa. I have an amazing First Amendment attorney, Alan Isaacman. If you're not familiar with his work, he won the landmark case, The People versus Larry Flint. I believe so passionately about this. If I don't stand up and say this, I'm afraid there's gonna be some 12-year-old nerdy girl like me in Forest Park, Illinois, who's gonna maybe be watching me to see what I do. And this bully and these, this president, of all people, is gonna come after me? He picked the wrong redhead. And he's, he's sort of a redhead, although it's sort of like a parfait cup sometimes. I mean, there's like a red and then like a yellow. And I don't know. I think Melania does a lot of nice and easy. I don't know, but maybe she does it. The point, I digress. So that's what I do, you guys. I improvise. I try jokes. My mouth is really dry because I'm so nervous. But I don't want this to happen to anyone else. I tour for a living. I love doing it. I perform everywhere people want me to laugh. And honestly, one night it's a performing arts center and the next night it's two shows in the Potawatomi Wisconsin Casino. And there's been a change, a real shift change. in you know, starting maybe about, obviously about 18 months ago where I, Fox News ain't got nothing on me. Although I think you should know, my mother who thinks Fox News is real is not speaking to me because she's in love with Tucker Carlson. <laughs> so I'm even in trouble with my mother. So don't worry, everyone hates me. I do, I need water, I'm, gonna, I'm probably shaking. And I'm afraid I'm going to get that under boob sweat, which is really <laughs> the bad one. <laughs> that was not appropriate, so, right? That wasn't appropriate. Okay, so <laughs> I'm, tr I'm not good at being appropriate. I only know how to do comedy one way. It's in-your-face comedy. I keep it real. I, I, I'm going to make fun of the president. And you know what? I'm going to make fun of him more now. More. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to threaten him. I have no desire to harm him or anyone. I would never want to harm anybody. But, you know, I've made fun of W. I made fun of Clinton. Oh, God, remember the Monica dress days? Those were the days. You could make dress jokes all day long and nobody tried to kill you. You shouldn't have to die for this. I'm under a Secret Service investigation. And the first family did not come after you with any of the other presidents. 
You know, it is yes. so unprecedented for and, them to and respond I, to I a comic. I get what I I get what I am. I'm the shiny object. I get it. We all know what's going on here. They're using me as the shiny object so that nobody's talking about his FBI investigation. All right? I get it. And I made a horrible horrible mistake and I made a horrible call. I understand. But everywhere I go, people actually come up to me. And I like I said, I go everywhere. It's what I do. And they say, you know, oh, I'm a housewife and my kids have been driving me crazy and oh, I just needed 2 hours to blow off some steam and I'm glad you went there and you're saying the things I'm thinking. That's those are my peeps. I'm not for everybody. I'm I'm barely an acquired taste, frankly. <laughs> um, on a good day, I'm an acquired taste. But honestly, my whole career, I'm 56 years old. I'm 110 pounds wet. <laughs> I've had everybody turn on me, and I just want to make people laugh. That's all I want to do. So I screwed up. But I want the gay guy who came to see me in Lake Charles, Louisiana, a few weeks ago, who said, I wanted to come here because I'm scared to come out. But I get to come here and laugh for two hours. Oh, that's what I'm telling you. That's why I'm here. It's, it's honestly, it's not for me. It's for them. I think a few people might actually be watching me, and I want them to see this old dame. I'm not laying down for this guy. I'm going to make fun of him. I'm going to make jokes about him and the housewives and Kardashians. But, you know, he does provide a lot of material. I mean, you got to be honest. He really, it's a good time to be a comedian. It's scary to be a citizen, but it's a good time to be a comedian. That's great.